I hope that you and your families and colleagues are doing well during this time. Thank you very much for joining us for this important webinar. We have some special guests with us today. His Excellency Mr. Emmanuel Lerner, Ambassador of France to India. Ms. Dana Purkarescu, Minister Councillor, Embassy of France in India. Mr. Daniel Metra, Head of the Regional Economic Service, Embassy of France in India. And of course, you know our President Sumit Anand and myself. Just a few rules before we begin. We would request, we would request you all to please keep yourselves on mute. Uh, please also keep your videos off uh, unless you are speaking. You may type your questions in the chat box and we will take up these questions during the Q&A session. So as of now, only five webcams will be on for all of the speakers. Thank you very much. I'd now like to invite our president, Sumit, to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you very much, Payal. Uh, welcome everybody for this webinar. It's great to see uh, an excellent participation. I think we've got about 150 people registered. I see we're already about 140 online. I'd like to thank His Excellency Ambassador Emmanuel Lana for taking out time for what's been a very busy period for him to speak to all of us. Uh, it's very important for our community at the French Chamber to hear from the ambassador at, at moments like this. I'd also like to thank um, Madame Dana Urkarescu, uh, the Deputy Head of the Mission, and Mr. Daniel Meth, the Minister Councillor for Economic and Financial Affairs, uh, to join us today and also address us uh, today. Uh, these are unique times for all of us, um, and therefore it's great uh, to be together uh, socially, uh, even though we are digitally together. But as I think all of us have uh, learned over the last few weeks, uh, we are able to uh, connect uh, well through these tools. Um, and I think this is a unique opportunity. It's the first time I think, Ambassador Lena, that we have had a, 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 a digital webinar with an ambassador, and you've got people from across the country uh, in, in one room, if I can say. Uh, and, and we're so excited to have you with us today. Um, it's going to be a, hopefully an interesting hour. Uh, as as Pyle mentioned, uh, you know, towards the end, we'll have a Q&A, so you can please use the chat option. Um, Maybe just to start with, uh, I, you know, with my own introductory uh, welcome today. Uh, first of all, I hope that all of you are are healthy and safe. You, your families, your teams. Um, this is something which has come, on, come, come upon us very suddenly, and as I think we've all followed the news, uh, it's something that will stay with us for some time uh, till at least a vaccination is found and hopefully a treatment soon enough. So I think all of our lives have to you know have to be based around um, primarily initially looking after ourselves um, and i encourage you to do the same for your for your family members for your elders for your neighbors for your friends and colleagues when you get back to work uh, we had a webinar the other day and one of our members talked about the importance of physical health but also talked about the importance of mental health um, and i think we should not ignore that um, it's 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 not human to be confined for so long even though we're in the comforts of our home and with our family uh, and tomorrow when we'll go back to work with with the the the, the anxiety and risk that may be there we should not hesitate also to look after ourselves mentally um, and our dear ones as well uh, the COVID crisis is obviously a unique crisis it's the first time that we're dealing with the health um, and uh, an economic crisis uh, as a fallout um, you know it clearly seems to be tough times for some of our members um, uh, you know Pyle will tell you about the the survey that we conducted uh, with our members, we did two surveys. Pile, I think one was in the middle of March, and the other was in the uh, first week of April. Uh, and what we saw, even within those three weeks, uh, was that obviously there was a sense of pessimism around how the business will be impacted by all of this. I think about 80% of people were expecting a decline in business, and 40% thinking about cost containment measures. And most beginning to realize that recovery will be not maybe one to three months, but maybe longer than that. And it's not surprising, I guess, for all of our businesses, our revenues are down, maybe uh, zero for many, while our costs remain the same, and, and ultimately cash is always limited. Uh, and there's a huge amount of uncertainty and very little visibility. I think as, as we had an economist on the call the other day who said, let's be very clear, uh, nobody knows what's, how this is unfolding. So it's a bit of a week-to-week, -week, month month-to-month situation. Um, but I guess, given all of that, uh, let me assure you, my own personal belief is that we will be fine, ultimately. Uh, it's a unique situation, but there have been others. Um, I mean, every eight years or so, there's a financial crisis in the world. 
Um, and it's important to remind everybody of that. I think, you know, it's interesting. We live in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a very young country. I often say this when I travel there. When you get on a flight in India and you look at, and if you're yeah, towards the back okay. of a plane and you look at the passengers in the front of the plane, you see most people with black hair, unlike people like me who are graying and trying to protect our, our little black hair that we have. And you realize that, you know, 50% uh, of India is under 30, um, which means that most of the employees who are in our teams and the median age is probably around that as well. And the last time there was a crisis, which was in 2008, they were probably 18 years old or 20 years old, right? So it's the first crisis for many of them. And I think it's important to remind them that, you know, crises come and crises go. It affects our businesses, undoubtedly. It affects our careers sometimes in the short term. But in the long term, it always opens up great opportunities. The best of the world has always come after a crisis when there's been a new economic boom with new models, with new talents, with new opportunities. And I think, therefore, we should remain optimistic about the future. We should take this opportunity to learn. Um, and, and, you know, and, and one, I think a great opportunity is we're all working from home, right? A lot of us always wanted to do that. <laughs> and now we have companies who are telling us to work from home. So, there is, you know, so let's look at it positively. Uh, I mean, there's also hope for India at this point. You know, the news from, from the rest of the world is, is, not, is not great. Uh, somehow in India, even though our cases are climbing every day and we've had doctors talk to us recently, and, you know, we got to 20,000 today. It sounds like a large number. But, you know, it, maybe our young demography will help us, right? Um, our de young demog demography has brought us still where we are. If today we are an emerging economy, it's because of this young population. And, and maybe they will also give us the energy, the agility, the resilience to come out of this faster than other economies. Uh, so I think we should, uh, we should stay positive, uh, in, and especially in India. Uh, as business leaders, though, this is obviously a great test. Um, Many of us have been seeking answers on, uh, I'd say, how do we address this, right? And my own view is you need an intellectual approach at times of a crisis. Uh, and, you know, we've been reading about what those could be. Uh, I'm happy to share one that I came across, which I think is relevant for, for all of us. It's something called the Stockdale Paradox. Um, I'd advise you to see the video by Professor Jim Collins, um, which is available on, the, on YouTube. And essentially, the sum of the Stockdale Paradox uh, is the following, right? Uh, it's two sentences, and I'll just uh, sum it up. Uh, that is, to retain faith that we can and we will prevail in the end, and at the same time, be disciplined to confront the brutal facts as they are. I think this is the paradox that we have to deal with. That on, on one hand, we have to be full of hope and faith, and on the other hand, we will have to make uh, hard decisions on how we move forward uh, and how we lead. Uh, more, more concretely, I guess the questions in our, in our minds are the following uh, today. How do we safely come out of this lockdown? What is the impact of the lockdown on our business when we restart? Uh, what will it take to survive in the evolving situation? And finally, what is our plan to rebound our business with our teams to grow again? Um, and I'm sure all of you already working as, as companies in addressing some of the more urgent issues, whether it's in terms of employee safety, or in terms of firefighting the government in, to understand what you can and cannot do, uh, where IFKI is being a lot of support, as, uh, as we'll tell you in a minute, and obviously protecting your cash. But moving forward, you're going to have to ask questions on our business models. Uh, where's the uh, EBITDA coming from? How will that change? Where's demand? Where's supply? And I'm quite confident that we'll solve these problems um, as company, as leaders. And I can assure you that IFKI will be there to help you uh, solve some of these problems. Uh, I guess what I should mention here as the president of the chamber is that uh, IFKI's, you know, been very active and I want to start by congratulating our, our DG Pyle, uh, as always, and her entire team, who's some of whom are also on this webinar, for all the hard work that they've put in working from home. And it's not easy, as, as we know, in the last few weeks to get IFKI uh, completely online to serve its members, to provide as many services as it could, to provide as many contacts to, to exchange, to learn. Uh, to solve problems for our members, and um, and it's great to see that. I'm just going to list out a few of them. Uh, you know, as you, I mentioned about the survey that was done. There's been advocacy efforts with representation, which has helped help solve problems with local authorities for many companies. If some of you need help, please don't hesitate to come back in touch with you know, the IFKI team later today. Um, uh, we are in touch with some of the authorities in Maharashtra, in Karnataka, in Delhi, with the government of India, so we can clearly help. On a case-to-case -case basis, basis, we'd be happy to. Um, the team has put together 
a whole host of webinars, 12 webinars where with an average participation of 100 people covering issues from HR management to performance of contracts to uh, data security, uh, employment laws, uh, so all very relevant subjects. Uh, we've had many committee meetings uh, go online. I know some, uh, some of you are here on the group uh, on the webinar today. I congratulate you and thank you for, for, for your time. And, and obviously, Ifki has also been happy on the CSR side. Um, uh, we're going to send a note to His Excellency later today, giving him uh, details of what all of, you are, all, of you all of your companies have done to help uh, fellow Indians at times like this. Um, so, you know, Ifki has been very active. Uh, before I call upon the ambassador, I just want to say perhaps one last thing. Um, you know, the Indo-French business relations, which is what defines us at IFKI, is obviously critical. Uh, my own personal view is that in, in times of post-COVID, uh, relations between friendly nations will become even more important. And I think the Indo-French uh, friendship is long-standing and has been time-tested. Uh, India has shown to French companies uh, its potential as a market, as a base for a talent, as well as an increasingly an inc part of the global supply chain. In France, as we've seen, you know, uh, somebody like me who's who's been uh, associated with France now nearly for 28 years, uh, it's it's so exciting to see the change that France has been through these last past years with new generational leadership and uh, new technology and investments coming into France and you know groups from France, not only the large but many mid groups some of your companies and even startups embracing the world and, and beginning to embrace India, right? So personally, I remain very confident that the Indo-French relations will do well, but we all look forward to hearing from the ambassador on, on his views on that. Um, I also, just before I hand over to the ambassador, want to thank um, all of you members for your, your, your active involvement with IFKI. I want to thank our executive committee, uh, our treasurer, Francesca, our VPs, Emmanuel, Emery, Joel, Eliza, and our honorary rep from Pune, Ravin. For having taken our time for IFKI and for the teams to to support the chamber in these last few weeks. Um, now coming to the main reason why we are all here uh, is to hear our, our dear ambassador, His Excellency Ambassador Emmanuel Lena, um, and we're so happy to have you, Ambassador. We are now up to the 150 people I can see on the uh, as as we had hoped. Um, I'd like to, though it's not in my place, if you allow me, uh, on behalf of everybody at IFKI, uh, some of us have obviously seen. The, the amazing work that you and your team at the embassy have done uh, to, to, uh, to repatriate and to save and look after the health of uh, the French nationals who were stuck in India, uh, who were here as tourists, and to help them go back to their families in France safely. I'd like to, uh, if you allow me, to congratulate you uh, for what you've done. And it's, it's really, uh, it was just for us to sit at home and see you on Twitter out there, looking after these people, organizing them, to bring them from all the small towns of India. Uh, so that they could get on those planes uh, is, is was just amazing. It, it inspires us to do the same also uh, when we ourselves come out uh, from where we are, which is largely stuck in our homes for the moment. But uh, again, um, uh, you know, we look forward to hearing about that from you. I'm sure you'll touch upon it and also hearing about your views on, on where Indo-French relations stand and where you see it going. So with that long introduction, uh, I'm very happy, Your Excellency, to ask you to take the floor and to address our members. Thank you very much, Samit. Can, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, we can. It's a yes? OK, great. Well, thank you very much to, to you, to, uh, to your team, to IFKI, for, for organizing this webinar, uh, and uh, for all the activity you've been displaying during this uh, crisis. It's most useful. I must say I'm uh, uh, very impressed at what you've been doing, by the, uh, especially by the advocacy and the, uh, the lobbying you, you've done uh, with the local authorities. And it's good. It's good to have you. It's good to uh, uh, to have you as a I would say as a first strike with the authorities and uh, the embassy, the consulate will uh, will, will give some extra push. Uh, after that, but it's really great that you can maintain this contact and uh, and look the authorities with. Thank you very much, and thank you also for all the uh, the positive energy you uh, you maintain during this period. It's uh, it's very it's very positive. Uh, as you as you said, it's uh, the crisis is uh, is a tough uh, period, but it's also uh, filled with opportunities and. Uh, 
at this stage, nobody knows exactly what uh, will come out of it and uh, how India and business in India will emerge from it. Um, there's one uh, thing which is certain is that it will uh, uh, imply uh, major changes in the supply chains, as you see now, uh, our government in uh, Europe, in France, uh, are very much willing to, uh, uh, to develop some sort of uh, sovereignty for key industries, uh, obviously pharmaceuticals, but um, a few others, then are, go are going to work on, uh, on localizing more and more industries uh, in Europe or in, uh, I would say, uh, friendly countries. And uh, I'm sure that India, uh, in this um, context, will benefit from it. So it's something we're going to have to assess. And uh, you may have some views on that. Great, great, great to talk to you because uh, it's uh, the crisis is um, is a sanitary crisis, but uh, it will be more and more uh, an economic crisis, and uh, as it uh, uh, develop over time, and uh, I think we will need some uh, uh, some close uh, connection among ourselves uh, to uh, to sustain your to sustain your activities. The, basically, thank you for the kind words you have uh, about the embassy and the consulate. Basically, we've been um, trying uh, the last few weeks to be as efficient as your companies in the way we reorganize. In, we, we've been devoting 99% of our, our energy uh, to dealing with a crisis. As I must say, our, our government has been doing. I mean, if uh, uh, this is really the, the main, main, main uh, uh, issue and uh, task for, including for for presidents and uh, our prime minister in India. Basically, the, um, for the embassy and for for the council, there have been three phases. First, it's the first priority has been to evacuate. Um, our, our nationals, which were uh, at risks, which means uh, tourists uh, who, who soon would have no shelter and uh, and uh, and, and, uh, and few access to uh, uh, in case of need to uh, to medical uh, health uh, structures and um, people who, who were uh, pretty fragile due to uh, age or um, pathology and so that was the first priority and that we've been uh, doing very actively on that we've been repatriating roughly 2,000 uh, tourists and uh, uh, with special flights and uh, as you mentioned it's very challenging given the fact that our tourists were sc scattered all, uh, all around India very different from some other countries where you had big uh, uh, chartered groups um, staying in the same place, same hotel, and it was much more easy for some certain uh, fellow ambassadors in, in other countries to repatriate them. In India, as you know, uh, we have more uh, uh, some sort of uh, adventure tourism, and uh, which means we have to, to organize uh, buses and uh, to pick them up in uh, um, it's quite remote places and with the lockdown was not very easy but we, we managed nicely and now this phase is over we, we have um, uh, most most of them are, are back home and uh, and fine like this you may ask us and some of you have already asked us what you should do um, uh, with the expatriates working in your company and that I, will, I want to be very clear on that. Uh, our authorities, uh, our president, uh, our uh, minister for external affairs in France have been uh, very clear on that. Right now, given given the uh, given the uh, the state of the uh, uh, of the health system in France and the priorities. We recommend uh, residents overseas, French residents overseas, to stay where they are. I think they are safer, and uh, that's what we recommend. 
which 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 means some uh, some of your companies, the headquarters, have been advising uh, your staff, uh, French nationals, to go back to France. Uh, this is a decision that's been made by your company. Uh, obviously, we cannot prevent you to do so, but uh, this is not something that we're going to uh, to assist um, with. Um, uh, uh public uh, means and things uh, we're not going to organize special flights to repatriate residents at this stage this is not the frame and, and it is, this is very clear second second uh, second task we've been uh, we've been doing these days uh, it's been it's been about sourcing uh, uh, medicaments and uh, medical equipment in uh, in, uh, in, in India, um, as you as you've seen, uh, some um, some drugs were in dire needs everywhere. Uh, those uh, needed for uh, anesthesia or, or, or very common also drugs like paracetamol. Um, so we've been greatly helped uh, by India. The Indian government has been very forthcoming and displayed a, a lot of friendship uh, and we're very we're very uh, grateful about that and uh, and we're going to give back soon because as you, as, you, as you've seen uh, in france we now we uh, the situation is still uh, deeply concerning but we we've passed what what uh, so-called peak which mean which means the number of the um, of uh, new patients that have, are being admitted in intensive care units is decreasing, which means the pressure uh, on our hospitals is decreasing, and we were going to be able to, uh, in the future, to uh, uh, to devote and may, maybe to give to India some uh, to give back some uh, some equipment, some tools, maybe including uh, ventilators. Something we we have to see. And um, but this 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 is this is the uh, over coming weeks. And the third the third activity which is going to pick up now is the support uh, the embassy and the consulates are going to provide to your activities. So that, that's why it's very timely and very very important that we we can we can liaise and you can. Uh, let us know about any difficulty you have with the authorities to relaunch your activities uh, as soon as possible. I mean, we we we're going to use all the uh, loops and the uh, to to get the precise info. If key is the main player, uh, ask also the uh, conseiller du commerce extérieur uh, to uh, to inform us about any difficulty and need for push, please. Let us know um, as much as you can about that. And, and as uh, Summit uh, mentioned, be also positive, which means when you when your companies uh, are doing some positive contribution to uh, the the Indian response to COVID, let us know. I mean, uh, if uh, if any of you, for example, I don't know, has been transformed, turning in an assembly line. To uh, to uh, to produce ventilators or whatsoever, or providing some sort of equipments uh, to hospitals in India, let us know. We're going to make publicity about that. We're going to uh, it's a, it's a good deed, and we're going to 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 make sure that it's known by the, by the central authorities as well, maybe by a larger audience in India. It's in times of uh, difficulties that the partnerships has its value, and in countries like India, as in France, uh, people have memory. They will remember what you've been doing, and uh, this is this is important to to show uh, what we would call in France uh, uh, citizenship, which means. You, you you abide strictly by the laws, the rules that are being edicted, and when you can, you you do some social responsibility. You 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 commit and you uh, and you do some good deeds. Uh, that being said, uh, Samit, you wanted you asked me about 
general framework of uh, uh, political relations. Uh, I would say it's also 99% devoted to COVID, but it's uh, uh, it's very very still very strong. Um, President Macron and Prime Minister Modi uh, spoke uh, to each other. They had a lengthy, uh, very warm discussion uh, at the end of March. They're going to 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 have a call uh, soon again. And um, uh, Le Drian, for our foreign minister, had numerous calls uh, with uh, uh, Minister of External Affairs de and um, to, to discuss COVID, um, our citizens, but also what uh, India and France could do on the global stage. Um, You've seen that India has been very active to, uh, uh, to, put, to put on the table new initiative within the, uh, the G20, we're going to issue the, uh, the presidency and also on, on a regional basis. I mean, we have, uh, we have a huge concern to make sure that the, uh, the world that's going to emerge from, from this crisis is, is, go is going to be um, uh, a cooperative, uh, multilateral one. Some of the behavior we've, been, we've seen displaying from the beginning of this crisis uh, don't really uh, give us much confidence. That's why we must, uh, um, uh, with uh, like-minded countries in India, we must uh, double our efforts. This, there have been also uh, very intensive contacts on, uh, on the uh, uh, health sector by uh, and lately by our health minister Olivier Véran. Uh, we discussed uh, last week uh, with Minister uh, Vardan. Uh, they, they, share, they shared their, their best practices, they, they, they shared their figures, they shared also, uh, they discussed also how they could cooperate in terms of uh, R&D on vaccine and uh, also on uh, how they could, they could uh, add to source some uh, special uh, treatments and drugs. So all in all, this is a, a very uh, tight cooperation uh, uh, and now the, uh, the um, what we, we have in mind is to prepare for the next phase and, and uh, to support to support your activities and to relaunch some uh, political visits and um, so we're going to uh, to work to have some uh, high profile uh, events and visits in the second semester and uh, hopefully not too late in the second semester Excellent. Did I lose everybody? No, we're all there. We're all listening very intently, Ambassador. But uh, uh, I imagine that this period is very, very, very challenging for, for you, for your business. And for and you have to make some uh, strong, fast and uh, impactful decision. And I must say that we are clearly behind you and trying to assist you as much as we can. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for those words and uh, for that assurance and, 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 and especially also for all of our member companies who are listening to know that we will have, uh, as always, the support of yourself and your office and the embassy and the consulate in, in resolving issues that will come as we go through these coming days and weeks. And obviously, as a chamber, we will do our best to help them and we will be uh, uh, delighted to work with you as much as we can uh, in, in these areas and any other area that you would, would like us to assist. So, thank you again very much for this welcome address. On, and uh, uh, I'm sure there are going to be questions. I can see there are some that have already come on the chat uh, group, but I think uh, because you're on the phone, you may not be able to see them, but we'll come to them later on in the Q&A part. And uh, for the moment, uh, I guess what we can do is move on, Payal, with the with the next uh, part of the agenda, and then we come back with the ambassador with the Q and A.
Yeah, absolutely. So it's 10.30, we'll move on. So I would now like to invite Ms. Dana Purkarescu, Minister Councillor uh, at the Embassy of France in India to talk about some of the actions being taken by the French Embassy. Dana, can you hear us? You can switch on your camera and your, and your mic. I... Hi, we can't see you. I manage for the mic. I'm not sure I manage for the camera, but... Um... Uh, yes. Oh, good to see you. <laughs> Over to you. Good to see everyone. Uh, I think my boss said almost everything, as all good bosses do. Um, I just wanted to, to flag a couple of issues that we are working on here, uh, which are variables that are going to affect pretty much the, the activity of everyone. The first thing we are tr trying to, to find as much information about as possible is the travel restriction and uh, the pace of the, of the um, flexibility that would be applied. Uh, uh, of course, international travel uh, is important, but also internal travel. If, uh, if we manage to get uh, some plan or at least uh, a limited flexibility to travel by air within India. Uh, the second activity that uh, we are working on is the visa issue for, uh, for the expats who are nearing the end of their uh, uh, visa and need a renewal. That's another element where uh, we are trying to, to do our lobbying with the, the local authorities. Please do flag to us the type of visa that your uh, staff might have issues with. That, that would help us to make sure that we address all the specificities when we discuss and when we engage with the authorities. And the third issue that we are looking into, uh, of course, we are also employers uh, like you are uh, of our own staff. Uh, we are looking to the access to relevant and performant healthcare facilities. So uh, we keep monitoring these issues and, uh, and, the, and the capacity of the, the health institutions that we are working with um, in order to identify bottlenecks or, or uh, difficulties. The, um, uh, we have started seeing from yesterday on um, elements on um, uh, state regulations about hotspots and clusters, and they seem very different. Uh, states tend to uh, um, uh, adopt diff different strategies. Uh, some of them are putting the quarantine to 14 days, others are bringing it up to 28. So in the next days, we are going to try and map a little bit around us the, the, the different measures that have been put in place uh, in order to seek uh, at least non-discrimination or f fair treatment of, um, of economic activities. Last point where we are looking at, uh, you're all familiar by now with the MHA guidance on the resumption of activities. Uh, if you have identified a loophole in there that might be relevant to you or uh, a difficulty in your supply chain or anything else, do not hesitate to flag to, uh, to Sumit and uh, Payal. We are going to take that up with the authorities to see the maximum interpretation of flexibility we can get out of, uh, of those activities. But, but please have a close look at, at it because it's going to be uh, quite variable uh, on the Indian territory. It's not going to be the same approach. So obviously, if we find a place where, uh, where the situation is more favorable, we are going to try to expand that to as many uh, areas of India as possible. So do, do flag the issues to us and we are going to take them up on a, on a regular basis. We maintain here a steady level of activity at the embassy. Uh, you're familiar by now maybe with our um, uh, phone service in order to uh, uh, identify all the issues on that, that, uh, that are critical on the, in India. We are going to keep that service as long as possible, but of course, uh, just the same way as you are concerned by that, we have to last as long as possible with limited resources and um, People working uh, very hard, either at home or on teleworking or uh, uh, answering the phones, uh, they are going to need at some point some holidays. So we also started planning for the holiday period in order to make sure that we give a little bit of hope at the um, uh, at, at the end of the day uh, to to our staff to keep the to keep the the spirits high. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Dana. Uh, now we'll move on to our next speaker. I'd like to invite Mr. Daniel Maitre, who is the head of the Regional Economic Service at the Embassy of France, to talk about the impact of COVID-19 on the Indian economy. And after that, we'll take some question and answers. Thank you. Thank you, Payal. Can you hear me? Yes. Payal, you can hear me? Yes, we can hear you well. Okay, fine. Uh, well, thank, thank you very much for this opportunity to, to extend with the ISKIS uh, members. I'll start by uh, with a, a quick uh, reminder that, that, is that this um, crisis of, of coronavirus came at a time when the, the Indian economy was uh, already not performing that, that well. Uh, as you all know, the, the growth in fiscal year 2019-2020 will be at uh, six years low, uh, around 4.55%, uh, namely because of, all, of difficulties in the, in the financial sectors, be it uh, banking or, or non-banking sector. So now, on the impact, <coughs> impact of this crisis uh, on the Indian economy. Uh, as the ambassador says, said, uh, um, there's a lack of visibility and there are many uncertainties. First of all, because there are uncertainties uh, at the global level. Uh, Daniel, for sorry, sure. Daniel, this is to me, I'm just wondering, can you put on your camera? Uh, I think it's on, isn't it? Ah, yeah, now we can now it. So everybody Perfect. can see you. Yes, thank you. It's much better. I, I deserve it. Uh, so, um, well, uh, there, there are uncertainties at the global level. Um, we know that uh, the, the global economy will go through a recession in 2020. The last figure are, is uh, minus 3%. Uh, this is a six percentage point less than the, the forecast maybe two or three months ago, uh, but the, the actual uh, figure remains to be seen. I mean, it, it can evolve till the, the end of, of this year. And uh, obviously, this uh, global recession will have an impact on the uh, Indian economy. Uh, well, not to mention specific sector like uh, civil aviation or tourism, but uh, more globally, as through the, the trade balance or through uh, outflows of capital, uh, global recession will have an impact on, on, on the Indian economy. But the extent uh, or the, the depth of, of the recession uh, is not not yet uh, totally known. Second point, in India as in, uh, in many other countries, the evolution of the pandemic itself is not, not uh, completely known. When will it reach its peak and what will come afterwards? Nobody knows. Um, thirdly, on a more uh, economic perspective, there are many uh, questions without answers. How long will last the, the lockdown? Uh, when it will be lifted, how fast will the companies resume their, their activities, how fast the, the workers who left their workplaces could come back to, to, to work, what will be the impact on investment confidence, what will be the impact on, on, on consumers. So there, there are many, many questions and not that many uh, answers. Um, after all this uh, question marks, uh, a point on the, the actions taken by the, the Indian authorities. On the macro side, uh, measures have been taken and mainly by the RBI at the stage and, and uh, some have been taken by, by, by the Minister of Finance as well and more uh, may, may come sooner or later. Uh, on the central bank side, uh, there has been uh, two series of decisions on the 27th of March and, and the 17th of April, if I'm not mistaken, uh, like uh, low interest rate, um, refinancing operation, open market operations, uh, delaying of the implementation of Basel III, uh, well, uh, and a series of all those uh, measures. All these measures are, are really welcome because they, they improve the liquidity on the market and they, they support the, the confidence in the, in the financial sector. Financial sector is only one of the sectors of the, the economy, but still it's a quite important one, and specifically in, in a period of crisis. Uh, for the Ministry of Finance, Mrs. Starman has announced on the 23rd of March uh, a series of, of fiscal uh, measures like uh, delaying uh, deadlines. Uh, and a few days later, she announced a, a package of, uh, of 1.7 trillion uh, rupees uh, 
to help the, the citizen and specifically the, the, the poorest of them uh, through various channels in, in, in cash or in, in, in kind. Again, this is most welcome because the, the, the poorest part of the population will be uh, the hardly hit by, by the lockdown and, and by the, its uh, economic uh, consequences. Um, well, it is said uh, that another stimulus package is under consideration. There has been discussion, according to the press, between Prime Minister Modi and, and Mrs. Sitaraman last week. So, um, on that, we, we have just to, to, to wait and see. Um, on the micro level, uh, it has been already uh, mentioned by, by Dana, so I will we'll not come back to that. Um, so, more globally, now, where do we stand? Indian economy uh, facing this crisis has strengths and, and weaknesses. On the positive side, um, despite this uh, recent slowdown we have seen in 2019, uh, the, there is a long-term trend of, of growth in, in this uh, economy, and this potential has not disappeared because of this crisis. So that's uh, the, the basis we, we shall not forget. Um, and one of the factors for, for this long-term uh, growth is, as Sumit said, the, the age of, of, of the population. Another positive side, which is important in a uh, crisis time, is that there is no such pressing difficulty on the external side. The forex reserves of the, the RBR are, well, equivalent to eight months of, of import, which is a quite comfortable level. Um, there could be, uh, there are some, some uh, outflows of cattle, but on the other side, and on the other hand, big pan, uh, the low prices of oil will kind of offset the part of, of this uh, outflow. Um, on the more negative side, uh, there was even before this crisis uh, a problem of lack of confidence of the investors in the financial sector, but uh, as well in the, in the real economy. And so probably more should be done to, to restore this, uh, this confidence. To, to get the Indian economy back on track as soon as, as possible. And another point uh, I would like to mention is that there's not that much of a fiscal space, which is constrained for, for the, the Indian uh, authorities to, uh, to implement a, a new stimulus, <coughs> new stimulus uh, package. Um, so taking all that in, in, into account, the last forecast by the World Bank and the IMF well, can be seen as not uh, very optimistic since, for instance, the IMS forecast for, for uh, India is 1.9% growth. In, in India, it's a very low figure. But, well, compared with the other countries in this region and even with a, a big neighbor north, uh, it's not that bad. Um, so, so uh, I think, of course, the Indian economy has been hit by, by this crisis but really it could be worse. What about the next steps? Um, as uh, Sumit said, uh, crisis means, means difficulties, but means opportunities as well. Um, just maybe to, to mention one or two things, uh, I guess that the, after the US-China trade war and after this uh, coronavirus crisis, uh, the, the image of, uh, of China will probably change worldwide and this can open new opportunities for, for India uh, in terms of, of uh, imports and uh, uh, in terms as well to, of attracting global companies uh, wishing to, to diversify their, their production base. And more specifically, and I think that's the, the ambassador mentioned it, uh, the, the health sector and pharmaceutical sector uh, will be given uh, even greater uh, uh, priority in the world of tomorrow. And in this sector, uh, India has uh, obvious uh, strengths. So I think that there, there will be uh, new opportunities for Indian companies alone or in partnership with foreign companies to, to, to develop uh, in, this, uh, in this sector. That's uh, quite important. And for, for IFKI members, uh, I mean, uh, the ambassador and Dana already said it, so uh, I just want to repeat that we, we are with uh, IFKI, with uh, Sumit, with uh, Payal at your disposition to try and help um, while in the face of this uh, difficult period of time. That's it, thank you.
uh, once again, if I have to mute everyone. Uh, okay, great. So thank you, everyone. We will now move on to the questions. Uh, Sumit, if you allow me, I'll take this forward. Um, we have a first question from our vice president in Mumbai, Emerick de Rignes. Emerick, would you like to ask your question? Are you on the call? Can you hear us? Yes, I'm the call. Thank you for taking this question. Yes, I had a, a question more related to uh, the most isolated uh, of our, our fellows in India. Um, when reading the, uh, the Q&A uh, questionnaire on the internet site of the embassy, we see that if someone is severely ill, uh, he will be taken care, of course, by the Indian authorities. And at the same time, he needs to inform the consulate. Uh, from what I hear, um, I understand that uh, uh, if we are taken care by the Indian authorities, we are losing a bit the control of the situation because we don't know exactly in which hospital we will be sent and what will happen next. Uh, my question is, uh, is there a, a coordination or um, a follow-up plan by the uh, consulate uh, for these people uh, being uh, isolated uh, uh, kind of co medical coordination uh, from the from the consulate in a way, uh, just for these people not to be left alone uh, through the the medical system in India. Shall we reply now? Yes, we can do that, Ambassador. We can take. Uh... Or, if you, or do you want to hear all the questions? But I think we can take it a question at a time, if you're comfortable with that. Yeah. You're the boss, Samit. You let us know what you want to do. <laughs> no, please, why don't you go ahead and answer? If you... Well, um, if, if uh, a French citizen displays some uh, symptoms, uh, first recommendation, that applies to everybody and which is important, you get in touch with a doctor. That's number one. I mean, uh, you need medical advice. If, if, you, if you can't get it uh, on site, we will, we will see how we can organize uh, uh, some, something by visio with a doctor in France. So that's number one. You, you get in touch with a doctor and you get in, in touch also with your insurance company which might have some good advice to, 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 to give to you. If this is really uh, severe, I mean you, you have to, uh, to call uh, the number given by the authorities in India. That's important. But Doing so, you also call the concert and the embassy, and we, in case of uh, real emergency, we can we can and we will provide some special assistance. And 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 and, and again, I mean, uh, we're totally committed. Our authorities are totally committed to that. Uh, we uh, we're making a special plan to uh, provide uh, sanitary assistance to our citizens. I don't think many countries are so uh, protective with their citizens, nationals abroad. I think it's a good thing. Mm. But uh, we, we, we will do whatever it takes to make sure that our nationals are treated as good as they can. Cross my finger, right now we don't have uh, any dire case. And I think thanks to uh, also to the discipline and the, uh, the way that uh, our nationals have been abiding by the rules, but uh, we, we, we are making ready to assist anybody who would have dire symptoms. Okay, well, thank you very much. But please always keep the embassy of the consulate in the loop because we can provide solutions. Thank you very much.
thank you very much. Moving on, we have another question which has actually uh, been asked to us about four or five times. And to ask this question, I'd like to invite Joel Verani, who is our vice president in Chennai. He, he is the sales network director for Citroen PSA. Joel, are you on the call? Yes, uh, good, good morning to everyone. Could you hear me? Okay. So, uh, so thank you for taking this question. Uh, as you said, uh, this period is very challenging, uh, and thank you for your input. Uh, there are three key drivers to manage this crisis from companies. Uh, one is to protect people. The second one is to protect companies. And the third one is to be ready to restart the business. My question is about this first point. Uh, what is the visibility of the recovery of domestic and inter international flights, which is a key for business activity of some international French companies? Um. I can, I can say a few words, but uh, Daniel we, we may like to uh, uh, to compliment afterward. Uh, basically, uh, no visibility right now. I mean, the, the lockdown will will end on May third. We some companies like uh, Air India or others have posted on the website some announcement about flight after that, but we have zero visibility. Then what is sure is that uh, Air France, Air France KLM, are committed to uh, to do as much as they can to uh, to make sure that you have proper connection between India and Europe. And uh, as as you as you as you see right now, they are making from 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 Delhi two evacuation flights a week, which is a big commitment to their customers since they. They, they, they come empty without passengers. It's not a profitable operation, but they, 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 they do it still. And they, they will do it as soon, and on a commercial basis, as soon as they, 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 uh, it's authorized. But right now, uh, we have no indication of a date when it will be possible. Okay, okay thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to read out one next question we've received in the chat box. This is from Alain Spore, who is the managing director of Alstom. So he says that since 23rd of March, we are fully supporting our teams and employees, uh, and we plan to continue this way. Can we expect a direct or short term support from the Indian government? Maybe for, maybe for Daniel. Well, that's a, a difficult question. I mean, the support by the Indian government, by definition, is an uh, Indian government decision. Uh, so, uh, as I um, mentioned, there has been um, diff different uh, macroeconomic measures uh, from from the ABI, and well, it's not. Uh, only targeted to, to companies in the real economy, but still it, it helps. Um, there have been some some physical, uh, measures, but now we are still waiting for um, broader, I mean, stimulus package. But the, the the kind of of package it will be, if and when uh, it is this decided upon. Uh, well, nobody knows. Oh, at, at least I don't know. But I, I'm sure the Minister of Finance knows better, and, and the Prime Minister Modi. But uh, well, uh, it would be just speculate to, to tell you anything more 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 besides just just right now we have still to to wait and see. Daniel, we now have a question from our vice you. president for Ifki North, Emmanuel de Rockfey. Emmanuel, would you like to ask your question? Can you listen to me? Can you listen to me? Yeah. Okay, so good morning, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, good morning, Daniel, also. Uh, my, my question is, is about the economy, actually, because we all hear about the impact on the economy. We don't know, and you did not say anything, Daniel, 
about the impact on the Indian budget itself. I guess like any enterprise today, um, uh, the, the, the Indian government is uh, choosing between what is essential for him and what is not essential. So my question is, have you heard about any budget cut in vis-a-vis uh, -vis the initial budget which was published before uh, the COVID crisis? And if so, uh, what are the ministries which are the most impacted? Do you know especially if the Ministry of Defense has been impacted? Um, I mean, first time being the budgetary impact of the measures already taken by the gov uh, government of, of India is rather limited. It's uh, around the 0.8 percent of, of GDP. So there's at this stage uh, not such a, a need for for budgetary cuts. The the real question will come when there will be if and when. There will be a, a stimulus package of, of a more more sizable um, impact, and then we will see. And I, I guess that's one of the questions which may be uh, delaying a bit the, the announcement of, of this uh, package is whether the Minister of Finance and the Prime Minister wants to want to uh, keep to the fiscal orthodoxy and not to go too far in, into fiscal deficit. Uh, I remember that the, the fiscal situation and the debt situation of India is not very comfortable. So there, there could be spend uh, um, in certain part of the administration to keep the fiscal deficit as low as it can be, and then it means that if there are support to certain activities or, or certain companies or certain uh, citizens, then there will be a need for cuts in, in other part of the budget or it could be a total uh, relaxation of the fiscal uh, rules and then a, a big stimulus of the, the macro uh, of the macro side i mean but what will be the uh, eventual choice of the um, indian authorities that i, I can tell you uh, at this stage okay uh, if I may just say a word on that, uh, uh, Emmanuel, it's it's really too soon to, to tell, uh, as Daniel just said. I mean, in terms of uh, budgetary process, you you I mean you first uh, when there's a fire, you just pull the money, and that's what uh, all our governments are doing, uh, and then there's a going to second phase, but uh, not not before summer. We're all going to to see how we finance that. And, and, and where we make the cuts. Uh, ob ob obviously, obviously, for for defense procurement, the crisis is not a very good news. But the uh, right now, we have no uh, uh, bad signals. I mean, um, as you know, on uh, ongoing corporations, uh, both governments uh, claimed the force majeure, which means the, uh, if there's any delay, in the, in the delivery of some certain equipment, this would imply some penalties. And for uh, ongoing competition, we have not had any signal that uh, some of them were stopped. They, uh, they, they should move forward. And, he, and we, we make sure that we, uh, we maintain uh, good contact during all this period. I mean, uh, uh, I speak to the uh, to the defense secretary. Um, we we'll make sure that this uh, visit uh, by our delegation General de l'Armement as soon as the, uh, the flight resume and there's no uh, quarantine, and uh, hopefully uh, before summer. And, and we're going to work on, uh, on the visit as a priority by uh, our Defence Minister Florence Parly. As you know, she was due to, to be here today in India. And uh, this will be a priority visit 
uh, I guess uh, September or October as soon as uh, I cross my fingers the usual business uh, starts again. Thank, okay, you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ambassador. This is Sumit. I'm just looking at the time. So we are now past our 11 o'clock time. If you allow us, Ambassador, maybe we'll just take the last two questions and take two minutes more. Is that, uh, is that okay? Great, thank you. So there's a question here from Ranjit Nair of NG. Uh, and he's, uh, I'll read the question. It says, we expect many contractual op obligations would be affected due to this lockdown beyond the force majeure provisions and involving large values. We hope that our embassy would support us as usual when we try and address these with government agencies so that as a French company, we still remain, uh, because as a French company, we still remain interested in investing in India in the coming times. Uh, full, full, full support, full support, but please let us know, let us know as soon as possible the, uh, the problems you encounter. I mean, uh, more than happy to, uh, to raise uh, and to provide a list uh, to the finance ministry, to PMO, to whoever about the problems and to, to put them at political level. I mean, the, uh, the situation we experience is unusual exceptional and uh, everybody can understand that excellent and one other question then i'll pass it back to pile because i'm not so sure pile has this this is from suresh ramachandran who is the managing director of arkema uh, can we get an idea on overall manufacturing industry in france is every industry allowed to work currently so one of the big questions people are wondering in india we've shut down everything but is europe really shut down from an industrial standpoint and if you can tell us about France, that would be helpful. Uh, Daniel, you want to take this one? Um, well, I, actually, I'm more uh, I'm knowledgeable on the Indian economy than on, on the French one, you know. Uh, but uh, I don't think there's a lot of sectorial um, I mean measures in, in, in France more a question of whether uh, teletravail is possible or not and then uh, of course there has been uh, some specific uh, authorization I mean given for for people to go come to work in uh, essential uh, um, services like uh, <clears throat> um, shops for 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 um, uh, for food and, and things like that. So, but I don't think I can remember any specific decision made on a sectoral basis, except essential services for the day-to-day -day life of, of people. So, uh, basically, uh, uh, food and uh, the difference between uh, companies. Well, every company which can uh, work with a Teletravail are uh, encouraged to do so, but uh, more than that, uh, I I cannot remember a specific rule, but I can uh, try and find more more uh, details if if you if you like me to. I think Daniel, this question is relevant from various. If if as India will lift the lift down, uh, the lockdown, I think it'll be interesting for us to have an understanding of what other countries are doing. So uh, okay. I think you know, yeah, great. I think we've got Anand, uh, uh, who would like to make a comment. Is that right, Pai? Anand, we can't hear you. I think you're on mute. And we're going to wrap up then because we're out of time. No, we can't. No. You're on mute. Go ahead. Still on mute. Yeah, now we can. Last slide. Right. Yeah, now we can. Yeah, perfect. Okay, great. So thank you very much, Your Excellency, for today's uh, call. It was excellent. Uh, two quick comments. Um, one is uh, all Airbus employees uh, have given to the Prime Minister Fund, all of them, and uh, Airbus has matched. And these kind of symbols are very, very important for the Indian government and the Indian people. How we as French companies uh, show solidarity to our employees, how we treat our employees will go a long way, uh, uh, no matter how tough the times are. The second thing is, I request that all the French companies come together, especially the big ones like Dassault, Airbus, 
Thales. We need to do something on the CSR front together. Uh, ideally, we could use an Airbus plane or a French Air Force plane, uh, do the right kind of supplies. Even if it is a small amount from the smallest companies, it will go a very long way in terms of showing solidarity. You rightly said very articulately that the Indian government did not forget how we show and build French uh, Indo friendship. Thank you very much for letting me go. Thank you, thank you, Ananda. I see that you have a strong political uh, touch, which is very important, and uh, fully, fully, fully support what you what you said. I mean, if you can uh, pull some initiative by French companies again, we'll do maximum publicity. I mean, uh, I will I will go on site to 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 give publicity. I will ask our a member of the French government if it's uh, reopened. And uh, even even our president can mention it to Prime Minister Modi. You will have visibility, and I'm sure it will provide you goodwill by the Indian authorities and maybe Indian people for 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 a long time afterwards. So please do that if you can. I, I don't I don't know who can take the lead in your business community on that, but if you can uh, pull something, would be great. Thank you very much. It's 11.10. Thank you so much to uh, all of our speakers. Your Excellency, Dana, Danielle, Sumi. Thank you very much. Just one word. If he has and always has been your chamber, you can count on us for all of our support. All of our teams across five cities are working actively every day on a number of initiatives. Please reach out to us. We'd be happy to help you. We also received three more questions. I think I will send them directly to Dana and I'll reply to the the individuals who were asked. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe.